So I want to show you how to write a powerful, exciting research methodology. And this is because methodology is essential for every piece of academic work that you're trying to do, whether you're writing a PhD thesis or you're working on a master's thesis or even an undergraduate report. Whatever you're doing, you need to say what method that you're using in solving the problem that you're investigating. And that's where the methodology comes in. So let's sit back and relax as I show you three quick steps that you can use in accomplishing this. So we are going to work with Dr. Brian, who wants to write a research methodology for this very exciting project that says design of a solar powered robotic strawberry picking machine for the use in developing countries. And so he wants to understand what the research methodology would be for such a research. So he's identified certain keywords that would drive this report. He's going to fill the background of the section. And he's got a bit of the aims and the objective of the work, which says that the research aims to design a solar power robotic strawberry picking machine capable of running continuously and autonomously for use in developing countries. And then he's also highlighted certain objectives that he wants to do as regards this research. So that's sort of where he's stuck. And then the next thing he's thinking about how do I actually create a methodology for this? And so this is where I come in. And so what I'm going to be showing Brian is three quick steps that he can use in, in writing a powerful research methodology. These three steps include first, you have to research the method that you want to use. So there's a bit of research is the first instance. The second one is to formulate the structure of the research methodology that you want to write and then finally you actually have to write the research methodology so i'll be addressing these three points in the course of this video so let's look at the first one which is researching into the methodology that he wants to use and when it comes to research methodology it's sort of where students struggle a lot because there are three possible ways that you can do in researching understanding what you want to do with your research methodology and the first of them all is where you simply have to ask you probably would go to your supervisor and ask. Brian could come to me and say, oh, Michael, what am I going to do? What is the methodology for this research? And depending on how good your supervision is, they may tell you. But this is actually not a very good thing to do. You do want to go and find out for yourself what methodology really is going to drive your work. And so what I will expect Brian to do is not just simply ask me to tell him what he wants, what we need to do with this work. He really needs to go and find out for himself. And then after you've got a formulation, which is the second stage of this strategy, you can then sit with your supervisor so to discuss in detail what is going on with that and how to adapt it to the specific need of the project. The other step that you can use in terms of doing your research around methods is to use artificial intelligence. So I will normally go to something like ChatGPT and ask. This. So let's look at what ChatGPT tell us with respect to this topic. So I'm going to copy the topic and then I'm going to go to ChatGPT. So this is sort of a prompt that I'll give to ChatGPT. It can be whatever you, you want. And I say, write for me the steps for completing the methodology for this research topic. And then I'll put my research topic. So ChatGPT has completed and it's sort of giving us ideas of what. And the first thing he said, well, there has to be an understanding of the problem, which um, it makes sense because at this stage, I would have done some literature review, so that's okay. Define the requirement and objective. So there will be sort of an objective section of this research. So again, these two are a bit redundant. So what is really interesting here is that it's thinking of some conceptual design. So that's a good thing. So as part of this methodology, there has to be some sort of a conceptual design to drive what I'm trying to do. And in conceptualizing the idea, it talks about brainstorming and ideation where I get different concepts. So this is a good thing. So it's one step. So I'll probably take this and write it in my notebook as to one of the strategies that I will use with my methodology. And then it's talking about detailed design and prototyping, which again is powerful because you want to have some kind of idea. So what it's saying here is that there is a bit of CAD modeling that is required, a bit of prototyping required. Again, fantastic in terms of a methodology. So I'll note that. And then it thinks about the has to be some kind of performance evaluation so after you've created this solar power designs so there has to be a way of quantifying the effectiveness of my design and so he's thinking about doing some field testing some data collection fantastic idea so number three four five a fantastic idea and then there are some of the other final points you could consider optimization and refinements cost benefit analysis documenting the data and disseminating that information and many more so it depends again so all of them are valid except probably the first two which i think comes up you know you would have done that ahead of the research but again there is a pitfall when you're working with ai2 because ai tools don't actually understand the resource requirement within your organization with and so it gives you this a wide range of information which yes they make sense but they may not be realistic within your organization and so as much as those are important they are not adaptable to the work that you want to do but we'll talk about that in a moment when we look at formulating your actual 
methodology. The third way that you can do this, which again is a powerful way to do it, is look at journal publications. So if you go to a journal publications, they will normally have a method section. So you go and look at something that looks close to what you have. So let's go to Scholar and then we'll put that topic and then see what information will come. So let's look at this first one. So design analysis of a solar energy system for fruit harvesting robot in Pakistan. So that looks a bit close to what we want and then we can download that. Okay, so when we look through that, what I want you to quickly go and look at is that there is a materials and method section. So you can see what they are trying to do with their materials and method section. And then you can read through this material and method section and it will give you an idea. So this will be, again, another powerful way that you can use as part of your research. Not only will you ask, there's also possibility of asking an AI tool or even go and look at journal publications and see strategies that exist as to how you can go about doing that research. So this is all part of your general researching, again, around methods that are useful for what you want to do. Now, the second method is how you formulate, actually, the research methodology. Because beyond just reading widely, you need to start narrowing down to the methodology of your research. And what I would say you need to do here is to look, go back at the aim and objective of your research. Because you have a specific plan already in mind of what you want to do. So that will give you some ideas as to what methods that you want to use with your research. So in this project, so if there is the aim of his research. And so in terms of his method objectives, so these are sort of the objective he has in mind. First, to research the state of art of robotic technology. So this is part of literature review. Now, when it comes to actual tasks, because the objectives are tasks, the first thing he says he wants to do here is to undertake some theoretical calculations. So in terms of your methodology, the first method that he has to be in place is there has to be some theoretical analysis. So with methodology and formulating, so he will pencil down number one, theoretical calculation or theoretical analysis. And then the second thing that has to also come in here is the concept design. And when it comes to concept design, so that seems to suggest that there has to be some sort of card modeling for it. So a second methodology for completing this is to develop some card models of the solar powered machine. And in terms of these card powered models, so you're looking at using some kind of card tools like SOLIDWORKS. And then the fourth objective here is some sort of innovative power solar power mechanism. So how is this solar system going to work within a developing country? And what is it going to do? So there has to be, again, some sort of understanding of what the solar powered mechanism would have to be. So the work that the team in Pakistan were doing, the publication we looked at earlier on, so that here they were looking at some kind of battery powered system that sort of, you know, drives this um, fruit harvesting robot. So clearly in this case, what Brian would have to think about is what way to integrate solar energy within his system. So, and then finally, there will be some sort of virtual assessment of the system. So there's some kind of computational modeling. And this leads you to the idea of finite element assessment. So there will be a method involving finite element assessment. And then finally, there's also the manufacture of the prototype. So another method that you will need to use here is actual manufacture. So in looking at the objective, if they are properly written, they will begin to give you ideas as to what method that you want to use. So for example, in this case, there's theoretical calculations. So you do some theory analysis, then concept design using CAD tools, some solar power design. So there will be some exploring around solar power design, some computational work using finite element assessment and some kind of manufacture using again a manufacturing methodology. So those define the different things that you want to do. Clearly, he has left out the idea of verifying and field testing in this or dissemination of that data, therefore outside his scope. But within this, that defines how you can formulate your methodology. Now, the third method here is how do you actually do the writing? Of course, the objective of the research methodology section is to write. And in doing the writing, there are a few things that you need to, to, to structure your methodology. The first thing would be to actually define the problem. Remember, you're trying to solve a problem. So in the methodology, the first thing I'll do is problem definition. And that's a sort of almost recapturing as briefly as possible what you've already written, maybe at the background and the literature review and research. Data. So the first problem is that within these developing countries, they don't have mechanized farming. And so it's difficult to harvest their strawberries. And as a result, these strawberries, you know, get lost, you know, they're not harvested in time. And so that's causing, you know, economic losses to, to these 
farmers in these developing countries. So that's a problem. What is the solution? The solution is to automate the system because you want to use solar power to do this problem. And solar power has to be autonomous, it has to be continuous. And so that's the solution. Why are you using solar power? Because light is not always guaranteed in this kind of environment. So you want something that will work as soon as the investment is made in installing the solar power, then the system can just run as long as it wants. So that's a justification. So in methodology, you talk about the problem, you talk about the solution you're proposing, and then the third most important part is how, what method are you using to provide a solution? And this is sort of where you reflect back on what the objective says. So the method will be analytical calculations, like we stated before. The other method will be a, an FEA modeling for computational assessment, CAD design using SOLIDWORKS. Then you're also looking at manufacturing of the prototype. So these are the different methods that you want to use in investigating that problem. So these are sort of the main crux of your methodology, the problem, the solution, and what method that you're using to solve that problem. But then there are other things that I call ancillary parts of the research methodology. And these are sort of some other things that you can include them, you may not include them, depending on the kind of publication you're writing. If it's a journal publication, yes, you may not include these ancillary bits. But if it's a PhD thesis or maybe an undergraduate report, you do need to include this. And in this case, Brian is working within a research environment, so he would have to state this thing. And so what are these ancillary things? The first of them is that you need to talk about the deliverables. What are you going to deliver at the end of the project? In this case, depending on the, due to the complexity of Brian's project, the first thing you need to think about is it has to be a report. So usually there will be technical report associated with this. So one of the deliverable will be the technical reports, whether it is the first report, second report, or third report, or even the final thesis. The other deliverable is that he will have to have some CAD designs of these prototypes of this. So there will be CAD designs. There will be some FEA, final element assessment models that he's created and results. And finally, there will also be a prototype that will have to result from this. So a deliverable essentially is something that never existed before the project, but due to how the project has run, now can be delivered as a result of that project. So these are usually tangible things that you can see as evidence of the project. So you will need to state what the deliverables will be. You also need to state what the research resources may be. So clearly in this case, one of the resources that Brian will need will be a CAD software, so something like SOLIDWORKS. The other thing that you need to also have will be a final element assessment software like Abacus ANSYS, which you will need to use. And finally, there will also be the resource of how do you actually manufacture this prototype. So maybe a 3D printing system may be a method. So they have to be a 3D printer as a resource. Or maybe you want to manufacture them using a CAD CAM system or a left machine to sort of machine and develop these products. Again, you need to state this resource as part of your research resources within the methodology section. They may need, we need to also include some sort of risk assessment because every project has got risk associated with it. So within your methodology chapter, you need to speak about what the risks there are to completing that project. And in this case, you're being very critical. You're trying to identify what is the risk to you, what's the risk to your supervisor, what's the risk to people in environment that you're working with, and identify all these risks and articulate what remedial actions you want to take, you know, reducing those risk factors. So it's essential to think about this. So the way we look at it is that this is my plan A of what I want to do. What could plan B and plan C entail? So having these options will mean that if plan A doesn't work, then you can quickly go to plan B and C because in the end you want to kind of complete the project. Projects do change and so some sort of risk assessment is essential as part of your methodology. And those are some of the key things that I will have within this writing of my report so the problem the solution the method for the investigation the deliverables the resources and finally the risk assessment so once you have all that written you have an effective powerful research methodology and then you compile all that and include it in the session within your report so if you want to learn how to create stunning images that go with the report that you're writing then that's a video to see if you also want to take the ideas from this report and publish it in a poster then that's a video that can help you. Thank you for your interest in this video and I'll see you in the next. Bye-bye.